Hey guys, uh, so today we'll do a uh, quick walk through through the garden and the uh, fruit trees. I was gone for about a day and a half um, and it happened to fall uh, over a kind of a four day period where it was raining a lot. And so it was kind of nice that it rained so I didn't have to worry about watering the plants or the plants being dry when I got back. Um, so currently right now I have a number of seeds still kind of going. Um, some of them sprouted, some didn't. This is the basil. I already grew some basil that's already uh, a couple inches tall, but I always like to grow additional basil just so that way, um, um, that way I kind of have succession growing and, um, have some available down the road. Uh, this looks like zucchini, so... Um, it's interesting because I'm um, not sure exactly what's going on here, but I bought these zucchini seeds from the same company that I bought from pri uh, last year and the year prior. And the last couple of years that I bought the seeds from them, they all sprouted, or a majority of them sprouted. It was high germination rate. And this year, for whatever reason, I'm not getting a really good germination rate. Now, uh, there's a bean right there. The other ones didn't sprout for whatever reason. Um, I do have uh, some pepperoncinis I wanted to grow this year. So I got about uh, six pepperoncinis that just sprouted. Hopefully they'll do okay. And then here's the rest of the seeds that I have up here on the top of the hood of this old car. So I got, uh, let's see here, additional pepperoncinis that started about a week and a half earlier. <clears throat> And then I got some uh, mini sweet bell peppers, uh, those tiny little ones that are orange and red and green and different colors. And then I have some uh, red bell peppers. I have a lot of green bell peppers, but I wanted to have a few, um, few different colors on there. And then I have these tomatoes uh, that are growing. Um, I'm gonna wait till the roots get about another inch or two taller. And then I'll go ahead and then put them in the hydroponic coolers. I got some additional um, eggplant seeds in this container. It's a, you know it's uh, warm enough outside. It's about 70 degrees, but they germinate uh, anywhere between 70 and 85. So having that extra warmth from the top of the car is good. And then I have some additional seeds up here. I think these are uh, pepper plants. So uh, I still have a lot of seedlings still to go, and so. Uh, doing pretty good on that. Now, a couple, a uh, few weeks back, I went ahead and um, I went ahead and showed you how to grow and how to plant um, cilantro here, and then the uh, dill here. Now, with the dill, I usually uh, like to grow uh, dill in succession growing. The reason for that is um, I like to have dill throughout the year or throughout the growing season. So. I did kind of a bunch growing here. I have so many extra seeds when it comes to the dill and cilantro that uh, I can just go ahead and do it this way. But basically, um, um, what's going on with the dill is I like to make the dill sauce, whether it's for fish or for dressing or for dipping. And then I also use the dill for canning the uh, pickling cucumbers. So that's why I grow uh, a fair amount of dill throughout the uh, growing season. Kind of space it out and grow it maybe every three to four weeks. Um, I'll probably do some um, tomorrow or late this uh, afternoon. I've got a number of little chores to get done here in the garden. So I'm not sure if I'm going to get around to planting some additional dill and cilantro. But I, I definitely do want to get that up and running. But uh, both of these plants look really good, right? Um, here's a cilantro. Um, since I have so many extra seeds, I just do bunch growing. And they're coming in pretty good. Um, I like to, um, when they're sitting in these baskets, I like to kind of from water from the bottom. So I'll put the water here at the uh, very base of it. And it'll just kind of water wick its way up. Now here's a Satsuma orange tree. Ever since I planted it in the ground, it was indoors for the whole winter. And then I planted it in, in the ground and, and it really took a long time for it to take off again. It, uh, you know, it gets, it takes a while for it to settle into the, into the dirt, but it definitely, we had such cooler weather so far this year. Uh, unlike the last two years where we had really good weather uh, and hot weather, um, it's not 
been quite as hot here in the Pacific Northwest this year. And so I'm glad that the additional new leaves and new growth is finally emerging. Um, so I'm hoping that by the time we get into the next month or so, we're going to have a lot more foliage on this because as you can see, it's pretty bare. But uh, the leaves look healthy. I spray it with, a reg uh, with neem oil on a regular basis. And I am definitely going to spray with neem oil today. I'll tell you exactly why I have to do so. And then I took some cuttings from the, um, from the uh, rosemary and uh, growing them in here and growing the roots. I probably will plant them somewhere uh, in the garden because I do like to have rosemary, but I don't want to have to deal with the pots. It's much better to have them uh, sitting um, in the ground or planted in the ground so I don't have to worry about watering it and whatnot. A lot of green onions, a lot of chives. They're already flowering. I'll have a lot of seeds for that. To honestly tell you the truth, I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with all these seeds just because I don't really need them. I've got to get back to work next year. I've already got some work assignments abroad. And it's very unlikely that I'm going to do much growing of anything next year. I'll do some herbs, of course, because they're easy to manage. And I like growing herbs for all my cooking. Um, and as you'll see, I'll be going to the uh, day and the night markets uh, when I'm international. And I'll be buying a lot of my produce fresh on a day-to-day -day basis. And so I'll be doing a lot more cooking than, uh, than growing next year. And then here's uh, some catnip that I grew and uh, it's really taken off it's really growing well and then my onions um, it really is time to harvest these onions uh, they're getting really big here and so um, don't really need to buy any more uh, walla walla onions sweet onions or white onions anymore because um, they're growing so well um, I won't have to uh, buy any for the rest of this uh, summer and into the fall. Now here are the sugar peas and snow peas. They've just gone uh, crazy. And uh, you know, with over 100 uh, snow peas and sugar pea plants, I'm picking these sometimes every day and sometimes I'm picking every other day. But um, um, I just uh, was out here harvesting yesterday and I it took me almost an hour to get through it all. I was gone for a day and a half, but then it was raining for four straight days. So I had a lot of sugar peas and snow peas to, um, to pick yesterday. And then uh, I made three different kinds of dishes uh, with the sugar peas and snow peas. I did a Asian stir fry with uh, chicken and cashew. And then I did a kind of a soy sauce uh, with sesame oil. Uh, version and then the third one was butter garlic and so I made three different dishes using snow peas and sugar peas now here is the dwarf apple tree and um, one of the things I'm noticing with this dwarf apple tree is I'm getting a lot of aphids now and so I need to come through here and rub okay let's take a look here so here's the leaf let's see if I can get you a good shot here so as you can see, all that green little dots right there, those are aphids. And so I usually like to go through here and they always seem to show up in the, the more immature, um, the more immature younger leaves. And I try to just rub them off, but more than anything, I wanna come through here tonight. It's a little warm right now. Uh, I got other to do tasks here to do in the garden. But what I'm going to do is uh, I got to get through here, come through here tonight, and I definitely need to spray. I need to spray both the apple trees and the pear tree with neem oil. Plus, because we've had the rains, um, I might as well spray the, the uh, pepper plants and definitely the tomato plants. Because after a rain here in the Pacific Northwest, and the leaves get wet, it's really easy and it's, uh, they're a lot more susceptible to uh, getting fungus and diseases. And I tend to get them uh, showing up after the rains are done. So it rains, it gets the leaves wet, and then all of a sudden I get these little spots on the leaves. And so I wanna nip it in the butt early on. So I wanna go ahead and I wanna take care of that early on. So what I'll do is um, 
sometime today or maybe when the sun starts going down in the late afternoon I'll come through here and uh, I'm gonna have to use the one gallon or two gallon spare bucket I'll probably use the one gallon bucket that should be enough to hit everything but I've got a lot of things I gotta hit here so what I'm gonna do is uh, I'll spray the apple tree the pear tree the tomatoes and then any any solution I have left over I'll go ahead and spray the um, the peppers uh, peppers don't seem to need as much spraying, but definitely the tomatoes after a rainy session. But uh, currently right now I'm looking at um, at a problem with uh, aphids here, on especially with these leaves, the younger tender leaves, they tend to, for some reason, uh, uh, attract these aphids. And so I definitely want to go ahead and uh, make sure that I rub off all the aphids right now so they don't eat the leaves until I can get back out here and spray these leaves but uh, apple tree is doing really good I get the dwarf because I can't uh, manage with a huge 15 to 25 foot apple tree it just doesn't make sense here in this garden so I'll go ahead and take care of that a little bit later now here is the um, the situation I had um, when I was out of town. So went out of town, came back, and then I had a problem with the, um, I had actually moths, caterpillars, green ones, lots of them, inside the cabbage leaves. They were just, you, they had these tiny little grains, dots. They look like uh, little pieces of rice or something that are green. And I also have some caterpillars that were green inside of here. And you, as you can see, I have some leaf bites. And so I went ahead and it was such a problem. There were so many little eggs in it. And a couple, there was either one to two caterpillars per, per cabbage head that I had, that I went ahead and I had to come through here. And even while it was raining, I had to come out here with a garden hose and spray down. I sprayed down all the, um, all the cabbages. I had to kind of get in between the leaves. Uh, I had to kind of search for all this stuff here. And I had to basically come through here, hose it down. And then I covered it up. What I'm going to probably do is, as much as I don't really want to deal with it, but... Um, if I'm going to spray with neem oil, it also makes sense to go ahead and hose it down. So later this afternoon, early evening, what I'm going to do is come out here with the garden hose again. I will respray it down again. Then what I'll do is I'll let it kind of air dry out for an hour while I do the other spraying. And then what I'll do is I'll come back through here and when I hit everything else with neem oil, the trees and the tomato plants, I'll come out here. And I'll go ahead and hit that cabbage uh, with neem oil and then put the um, paint trainer bags on top of that. Now, um, I, had, uh, I didn't have as many green beans last year. And the reason for that, as I told you before, is um, I had a lot of rabbits. I still have a lot of rabbits, but I kind of kept them too low off the ground and on the ground. And they came through and ate the, a lot of the tops of the tender leaves. And so I didn't have a lot of green beans last year. So I went ahead and grew probably uh, about a hundred green bee plants. And so they're here in the containers already in the hydroponics, they're ready to go, they're doing pretty well. Um, should have quite a bit of a harvest eventually with green beans. And unlike peas, snow peas and sugar peas, uh, beans do like a lot of sun. So it's a good idea for you to not plant them too early and allow um, don't uh, allow them to kind of start their seedlings uh, indoors or um, if you're buying the plant from the store um, you can go ahead and uh, plant them outdoors once the weather gets warmer now this row right here uh, which only has two rows right now are the cucumbers and i have more cucumber plants coming i didn't want to grow as many cucumbers this year last year i grew way too many I can probably over 50 jars of pickling cucumbers and I also was eating cucumbers every day and I actually got kind of cucumbered out from, I mean I made cucumber salads and I uh, went ahead and ate them with, the, um, with a lot of uh, different kind of mixed salads and uh, vinaigrette dressing salads and other things. Uh, I ate them raw as a snack 
and uh, I ate a lot of them and kind of got burnt out on them. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, not grow as many cucumbers uh, this next uh, this current season. Now this row right here, uh, currently right now we're looking at about uh, 20 different, or maybe about 25 to 30 different uh, ver uh, different varieties of zucchini here. Uh, or I'm, I'm sorry, we got uh, two varieties, but I got about 25 to 30 plants of zucchini here in this row. Uh, I went ahead and uh, put them in its final resting home. Zucchini is doing pretty good. Uh, they do like the warmer weather, so that's why I'm kind of in this part of the uh, of the uh, the garden area, so that way it gets a lot of sun. Uh, eventually, these plants will get really big and i probably will need to kind of space this out a little bit more right now i'm just kind of in the part of the garden that has the most sun so i'm letting it kind of stay right here but i think um the two feet that i have in between the uh the coolers is probably not enough because that basically means that there's only one foot to the right and one foot to the left for each container and that's probably not enough for zucchini um, I mean, I could stake them up, but I'm pretty lazy, so I don't like to do a lot of staking. And so um, I'll probably take a couple of these coolers and spread them away, uh, spread them to another part of the garden, so that way I can have a little bit more spacing for the, uh, for the zucchini. But I went ahead through here yesterday, and I went through the new leaves. Uh, you can, this is a prime example right here. So hopefully you can see that. But I have a... Um, I have a flower bud here and what we're going to do is since this is such an immature plant I, I want to go ahead and take away these flower buds and I want all the energy to focus on uh, growing the leaves and the root system and the foliage so what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep on looking for these flower buds right so here like this one is here another one here sorry about the focus here let me see if i can get a better picture here so there's another flower bud so we're going to go ahead and pinch that sucker off and i really do need to come through here i got a lot of things to do today but i want to go ahead and do the to-do task get a little bit of afternoon watering for the th the plants are starting to get a little bit drier especially the seedlings and uh, what I'm going to do is come through here uh, later this evening and check every zucchini plant and make sure that I pluck off all the, uh, the flower buds that are starting to form because um, I want all the energy to go toward uh, producing uh, more foliage, better root system, better leaf growth. And here are the bell peppers. I think these are all green bell peppers. Uh, they're starting to flower, but I thought about picking them off and I thought, well, you know, we're already at about one, two, three, four, five sets of leaves here. So I'm gonna go ahead and let the flower buds go. It's not too important. So I'm gonna go ahead and let those grow. Now, as you know, I grew a lot of tomatoes this year. I do a lot of canning of tomatoes. I eat a lot of tomatoes. I make a lot of sauces. And so, um, we got, we're going to have close to about 300 tomato plants this year. Not really quite sure where I'm going to put them all, to tell you the truth, because um, with 300 plants, um, that's a lot. I'm going to try to give some away, actually. I got some more peppers. Uh, I like both jalapenos. I like snacking on sweet peppers, tiny peppers. Um, I like red peppers and yellow peppers, uh, orange peppers. So I grew up a bunch of varieties. Now, as you know, I had a little bit of orange spot on my pear tree, and I took away, I took off some of the ones that were really heavily spotted. And then, as you can see, take a look at that one leaf there. You can see the orange spot there. And that's not good and it'll keep on spreading so what I'm gonna do is come back through here and I'm gonna go ahead and spray I'm gonna spray this um, peach plant um, this afternoon late afternoon or early evening um, as you can see um, the foliage looks pretty good I mean there's some isolated leaves that have some bug bites on it for the most part it's not too bad now I went through here this morning, so one of my big rituals is I come through here with my cup of coffee 
and um, I'll drink my coffee in one hand and I'll take a look at these younger tender leaves and they were just full of aphids so I went through here while I was in between drinking and taking sips of my coffee I went through here and rubbed off all the aphids off of the newer leaves they tend to gravitate toward the newer tender leaves and they were just all up here and so I went ahead and I came through here this morning while I was drinking my cup of coffee and I went ahead and rubbed off all the aphids now the blueberry plants are doing really well I gave um, I, I had a few extra people who came to me after I gave them the gift of my blueberry cuttings my propagation and they said oh I my brother and my sister or my mom or my dad wants some blueberry plants so I was gonna have you know up to about 20 different blueberry plants uh, but I gave them all away so I'm kind of just down to the 10 blueberry plants or so but look how many blueberries are on here right you remember last year I didn't have a lot of blueberries I mean I had a fair amount but not anywhere near as much as I have now so uh, tons of blueberries here now I do need to come through here as the blueberries start developing because I have the type of birds in my in my area that will sit through here and especially when the bird uh, the blueberries start to develop and get sweet they're gonna come through here and they're gonna want to uh, eat the blueberries so I'm going to need to come through here and um, take care of kind of covering the blueberry plants so that way um, I actually get to harvest and eat my own blueberries. So in these four coolers, um, I know it's hard to see because I put seedlings in the kind of the middle of the containers, but uh, this is where I went ahead and grew the corn. Uh, I grew them pretty early indoors. And then um, here is the stock right here. This one's doing pretty good, right? So I have a number of, of corn here that are growing pretty well. And I'm sure within the next uh, few weeks or so, they're going to start forming uh, the stalks and the heads for the, uh, for the corn. But uh, here are some more cucumber plants. And uh, this one here was planted about a week and a half before this one here. But they're doing pretty good. And then, of course, I have more uh, pepper plants. Now, here is the cabbage that I told you about. Uh, here is a prime example. Let me take off this bag. So I came through here, and this one was specifically really, really bad. Oh, I'm glad that there's some you can see here. So take a look at this situation. So this cabbage right here was, I think this one had like four caterpillars on it. And then on top of that... Um, there was oh here's a caterpillar right here so there's these green caterpillars right and they're terrible on these plants and uh, you can see um, you can see this caterpillar right sorry guys I know it's a bad angle let me see if I can get a better angle so so this is the green caterpillar that I'm having and I'm having a problem with the cabbages because they tend to attract those type of moths. And if you look inside of here, let me see if you can get a good picture. So inside this leaf here, um, I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's tiny little green dots. Those are all eggs. And so, those tiny green little dots are eggs and some of them are down here right too and so this one here as you can see take a look at this how much damage I receive from from the caterpillars so this sucker here is trying to get away I'm gonna squash this sucker hope you guys don't mind but it just irritates me um, irritates me how they're just infesting oh here's another one look at this sucker right look at that little tiny little this one here is small enough I'll just go ahead and smash it with my fingers they're kind of gooey I kind of I don't mind smashing aphids and some of these other other beetles but these caterpillars are kind of mushy oh take a look at this sucker here you see look at all these eggs down here so I sprayed this but obviously I didn't spray it well enough so 
let me see if I can give you a better view. I know it's... So you see all those eggs right there? I need to hose this down. Actually, I see another caterpillar. Jesus. F and no way. Okay, so uh, this thing is littered with caterpillars. I, I, I'm i going to have to come through here right now after I'm done with you guys and just hose down. Hose down. So you see these caterpillars here? I'm just going to smosh them. So, I obviously uh, can't wait. So, I'm going to have to, once I'm done with you guys here, i got to come through here and uh, hose these babies down. There's th That one here is full of seeds, or full of eggs. So, I'll go ahead and take care of that once I'm done with you guys. So, here's some more uh, tomatoes in the middle. I got, let's see here, those aromas in the middle. Uh, these ones here on the left are red bell peppers. And then the ones here on the right are mini sweet peppers. Now, if you let them stay and get too mature on the vine, on the plant, uh, they end up getting hotter. And I don't like to eat, uh, I mean, I like hot peppers for my jalapenos. Or whether I'm taking the uh, jalapenos or the poblanos and I like to roast them. If they're hot, that's fine on those. But with the sweet bell pep uh, sweet peppers, sweet tiny mini peppers, they're really good snacking or throwing into salads. So I like to make sure that I harvest them regularly so that way um, they got that sweet flavor. Because the longer I let them mature uh, on the, on the uh, pepper plant, the more it ends up getting hotter. And here are even more tomatoes. I'm going to go ahead and have to give away a lot or do something with that. And then currently right now, um, this set of cucumbers here are ready to plant and put back into the cooler. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here. Um, probably won't have time today because I'm so busy, but uh, I'll do that tomorrow or sometime this week. Uh, for some reason, I'm getting a lot of bugs inside this, so I'm going to go ahead and take that bag off. Um, here are some additional... These look like beans. So what happens is with the bean leaves, my rabbits in my yard, I got a bot. There's times where I'll see 6 to 12 rabbits in my yard, and they love these bean leaves. And so either I need to put this container or there's basket up above on top of the car or I need to go ahead and put this uh, paint strainer bag on there in order to protect it from um, uh, from the leaves getting bitten off. Because once they bite off the heads, then they don't really grow back. And so I'm going to go ahead and take care of that. Now, as you already know, I do a lot of succession gardening. And so here's my red leaf lettuce on the left, my butter crunch lettuce on the right. So that'll be going. I already have two other sets of lettuce that I'm growing here. This one here, I've cut and grow method. And I've eaten this uh, probably about eight times now already. Uh, it's getting kind of tall enough. Here's some bugs. It's kind of good to actually come through here once a day, kind of shake the leaves off. You see all those bugs flying out? You see all that? I have this bag covered and for some reason they still somehow managed to get into from the bottom or somewhere there's just nooks and crannies they're able to look at all these bugs just flying out you see all this i don't know if you can see this through the mesh netting but there's a ton of bags or a ton of bugs inside the mesh netting so every time i shake this hordes of bugs are coming out so obviously i need to come through here I'll go ahead and I'll kind of twist this bag and kill all the bugs and then I'll go ahead and turn it inside out and shake it. But uh, it's always good to take your bags off if you're using it to protect uh, from bugs. It's good to come through here as much as often as you can, kind of take these bags off and then shake the bags inside out and pinch any bugs that you have in here. And as you can see here, the cabbage here is growing pretty well. That head is pretty good. I could actually harvest it now, but I'm going to just wait a few more, a couple, a couple more weeks, let it get really big, and uh, be able to uh, make some coleslaw or uh, Asian salad, or you know, eat it with uh, a variety of different things, or do a stuffed cabbage. But uh, I'm going to let it go here. I've got uh, 
I've got so much work to do here today. So uh, it was raining here the last four days. Didn't get as much done as I would have liked. But uh, I got so many to-do tasks. I'm going to kind of end it here. Um, I have some more videos with uh, how to grow oregano and how to grow some other things. Uh, I'll go ahead and uh, talk about those items uh, a little bit later and uh, post those videos uh, shortly. Talk to you guys later.